Okay, thank you. And uh, welcome everyone to day two of the uh, Winter S National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic at Home event. My name is Sue Diamond. I work for the Department of Veterans Affairs as a nurse and nurse practitioner. And I've been coming to the Winter Sports Clinic since 2009 as a volunteer, most recently as the team leader for the bootloader team. Those of you that have attended, have attended before know the bootloaders, we're the group that works at the bottom of the mountain in order to help uh, get veterans over to the ski lift um, and load it up safely. So it's my pleasure to be here with all of you today. And it's really my pleasure to welcome our next speaker. Uh, we have the privilege of being joined by Mary Ellen Malon and her father, Emil Malon. And I hope I said your name uh, correctly. And if I didn't, please correct me. Um, Mariella and her dad are going to share with us her journey from uh, her service as an Army veteran to her experience on the slopes in snow masks. And with that, we're going to start with a short video and then we'll hear from them directly. Why did you want to come to the Winter Sports Clinic? Because I like the snow and I haven't been in the snow for a few years and I like to ski. When she interacts with other vets, she has the opportunity to look at life from their point of view and she has a chance to grow by explaining what her life is about and what she loves and having new experiences that she would never have in her own community sled hockey, who would even have a chance to do something like that? It just, development, it's like tenfold. I can see her just grow within one week. And she feels, enjoys life. And then Hi. we have this passion to go do something different, more exciting, because of these opportunities. I feel I'm more confident in myself. And I don't have to depend so much on other people. Through the injury, she said, hey, you know, I had this injury, but guess what? It's made me a better person because now I appreciate life and I appreciate, you know, everything around the world. And you know what? It doesn't matter what you have for an injury. Enjoy life. I've had a lot of people tell me that, that I probably will not be able to do to do something, and then I show them that, that I can do it. Because she has a passion for life. And with that, I get to share it with her. And you need to believe in yourself, and you need to believe in those that can help you, and that's all. What a powerful video and you definitely showed us your passion for life. So, um, yeah, so let, let's hear a little bit more about your story, uh, your experience at the Winter Sports Clinic and how that's helped you in your, in your uh, recovery. <laughs> I had a, a traumatic brain injury in 2004, and then I, I recovered by I'm doing all these all, all of these alter, alternate therapies like swimming, um, yoga, skiing, skiing horseback. horseback riding, playing the piano. 
and I'm excited and everything has taught me to be um, to be balanced and to be, to be I guess normal again or to feel normal again. Um, everything is helping. That's awesome. Can you introduce us to the folks that you're sharing the stage here with today? Yes. And, and let's hear from them too. And my mother here is Lizette Malin. Hi. It's nice to my see father, you. My father is Emil Malin. Emil. And this is my friend Deborah Shore. Hi, Deborah. Awesome. awesome. And she's taken me to a few events. Yes. I'm with the DAV. Nice. Deborah, we saw you in the video. Is that right? Yes, yeah, correct. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about Mariella's experience and the connection to the Winter Sports Clinic in particular? Yeah. The growth, um, the experience of the Winter Sports Clinic helped her um, interact with other, other veterans. They share their um, common experiences and build friendships. And um, feel open with other veterans to talk. I think it's that, that openness that helps you um, realize you're not the only one in the circumstances and that hearing their challenges, also how they um, experience um, in their life and how different things that they do to help enjoy their life each day. So I think the interaction and then being doing physical things on at the um, winter sports clinic, like the mount um, climbing the rock wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was one, probably one of the more challenging things for you to do. Yes. But it was something that you, you put your mind to and accomplished it, where at first you were like, mm, I don't yes. think I want to do that. It was, it was like a little, um, made me a little nervous. And then I, I just had to um, take the first reach and and decided, okay, just keep on going up and you will get over your fear and you will keep on going. And That's awesome. The yeah. And the different coaches, the interaction and the positive um, reinforcement mm -hmm. by the coaches over the years. Um, Emil's taken us several times. I took her the first year and was just seeing um, their confidence on the snow and relaying that um, confidence to you that you could do this, getting on the lift and just, um, you know, they were just, you looked forward to it each day. Go, mm -hmm. oh, are we gonna ski again today? Yes. And it was just really, really great to see that they would, um, you know, have the ability to pick up all the different needs you had Right, they were so helpful. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of I mean, the instructors, the coaches, all the rehab specialists. We're going to hear from a few of them later on this afternoon and throughout the week too. But it, um, I remember when I first went there, just seeing all the people that are involved in helping to make that clinic happen and make the experience what it is, and um, and then of course the people at home who. Uh, help you uh, as you're in your sport, but also those um, professionals uh, in the rehab community at your medical center that really help you too. Um, was there anything special that you did to get ready for your first winter sports clinic? No. Just showed up with an open mind? The first year was, yeah, it was just like, an introduction to yeah to understand that I she could get back up on skis and and enjoy um, skiing again yes and having the confidence to say you know I can do this yes especially getting on and off the lift I think you were nervous about that yes that was very challenging so and going on the yeah and and going and on even the going on the airplane was was a little was a little tough. Yeah, that was the first time flying. Yes. Since your um, injury. And that was, yeah, emotionally very difficult. Yes. 
But I got and how many a, times have you been to the clinic? Eighty-six times, five times. Okay. Yeah. Five, maybe six times. Okay, awesome. Oh, oh. I'm trying to think what year? What was the first year that she did it? In the video. Uh, Jen, do you remember? You're on mute. No, I don't remember. I think the first time was with Deborah. It was with me, but I, we can't remember what year that was. Okay. Well, I, and I, I think it was it was when she when you make the video you show before. Mm -hmm. I think it was. Okay. It's maybe the first the or the second time. She won the Freedom Award the first year she was there. It was 2016. Okay. There you go. There you go. She won the award in 2015. So four years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it would have went last okay. year, but things didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, like Teresa was saying before the meeting started, 2022 is going to be a great year. And I think we can pretty much count on that you're going to be there, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Have you heard other ex uh, veterans have experiences um, flying on the on the plane, um, overcoming that? Did you know you know if other veterans have had that? Because that that was very challenging. Because you have to go up in the mountains like that. Yeah, it's just you know I can say usually when I come in, um, I'm on a plane that has a lot of veterans coming from. I come from the East Coast, so. Usually I connect through either Chicago or Houston. And when I get on that flight that's going into snow mass, most of the plane is filled with, um, uh, you know, participants and volunteers and uh, caregivers. Um, so, yeah, it's there's a lot of excitement, but you can see the trepidation in some of it. What I what I always like is there's usually some conversation among people who are coming back for their sixth, seventh time and maybe some people that are, you know, just coming for the first time and have no idea what they're going to be experiencing. So I do think that it begins at the airport. And of course, be, it begins uh, long before that for many as they work uh, with their rehab team to get there, to get their application done and everything. So Teresa, I don't know if you want to comment any more about things you've heard about people on airplanes coming in and if that, is has been a, a barrier for some to overcome. So, I I don't know if a barrier. I think I think it, you know overcoming that obstacle. I think it. Um, you know we've had many many veterans who have come to Winter Sports Clinic that for um, many that have decided to come to Winter Sports Clinic. Um, I think the biggest obstacle that they're worried about that first trip is traveling, getting to the airport, getting from point A to point B. Um, those types of things, many traveling for the first time since they've been injured. So, you know, certainly we have a lot of um, folks from United, United's a sponsor, and we have a lot of folks from United that try to meet and greet at the airports and lay, pave the way when you get um, to the different airports. But certainly, you know, I think sometimes that is the goal for first time attendees, just, you know, getting the traveling piece and and you know, taking that challenge on and getting them getting to snowmass. And so I think that, you know, it's interesting and great that you guys pointed that out because I think that, you know, that's that's a challenge. That's, you know, that's a deterrent at times for people to decide if they want to come or not. And, you know, I challenge everybody to take that first step. I think it it helps pave the way. And Marielle, I'm guessing that getting to the airport. Is a, is a little less stressful for you now yeah. that you've done it than it was that very first time and you're right. maneuvering that much better. So, um, you know, I think, it's, I think it just takes that courage to take that first step like you made. Um, so, you know, and we appreciate it. And Deb, we, we, we appreciate that you came with Mariella. It was, um, you know, from kind of a caregiver perspective, could you share with us, um, you know, how the Winter Sports Clinic itself has not only impacted Mariella, but impacted you with, you know, what you've experienced and what you've seen at Winter Sports Clinic. Well, it was really beneficial to me to see and talk to other caregivers too, um, saying their experiences and how, how to motivate 
yourself as an individual to be the best person you can be around the veterans. And um, just, it was really great that we got to experience some of the activities together, like we went um, snowmobiling together. <laughs> and, you know, Mariella, through an injury, has never driven a car or had that experience. And so it was really good to be out there and she, seeing her have the freedom and, you know, that, that experience of being out there with the wind in your face and everything like that. And then all the other veterans encouraging you to say, yeah, you can do this. Come on, you know, get on that, um, what is that, those sleds. Snowmobile. Yeah, the snowmobile, but also the, when you go ski, I mean, ice hockey like, but it's- Sled uh, hockey. Sled hockey. Sled hockey. Yeah. Right, and so watching all each other, encouraging each other, and also just experiencing, um, you know, everybody, how they deal with the time frame because there's a very structured schedule there and being on time in the mm -hmm. military was challenge, challenging for me at times. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really, you know, the organization there at Snowmass was mm -hmm. um, such, such a structure that you felt um, the freedom to try different experiences mm -hmm. Um, and then, and especially at the altitude and everything, adjusting to that, everybody was just um, always open to, to help you with any circumstances, you know, getting around the facility and, you know, everybody just shares things. Everybody, and the people that work at snow, um, on the mountain, all the restaurants and stuff, they always made it, they didn't, you didn't feel like you're an inconvenience you're always like welcome we're always welcome you into the stores and you know restaurants to eat at and stuff like that i just felt gosh this is really a family the whole mountain is a family up there it was really great yeah it, it's definitely a welcoming community and i will say that teresa and her team and everyone involved that event just really does run like a well-oiled machine so it seems like it gets better every year and 2022 is our year right <laughs> it's going to be the best ever. Uh, we have a lot to celebrate after two years off. Um, Emil, um, can you tell us a little bit from your perspective as a parent from, you know, having your daughter um, be injured to getting to snow mass? Any thoughts you'd like to share with the group about how that was for you and what you were able to witness? Yes, uh, I mentioned it before, but uh, uh, you just were talking about the trip in the airport. And when I came the first time in Snowmass with Mariela, it was actually her second year. And it was after the beautiful video that you did. And I do remember arriving in, in Aspen at the airport. They opened the door and Mariela went out and there was 50 people who say, oh, that's Mariela again, you know, and then the reception at the airport was so fantastic. You had oh, all those volunteers who came, they packed Mariela big backpack with food. I think I must have gained 20 pounds <laughs> eating all the food that, that they gave it to her, you know, <laughs> and it was, it was just amazing the way that the people uh, bring those those people, those veterans, and and the reception was fantastic. The way they treated us was awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, what I can say for snow mass is, I say it already before, but uh, what has made me the most shocks and shocking is the whole week everybody is happy you have all those veterans at hotel waiting half an hour for the elevator <laughs> waiting half an hour for the breakfast and i don't hear any complaint everybody is happy everybody is talking and as i mentioned this is this is a week of love. Everybody love each other. 
and and of course we have to to give this to one person which is doing this it's teresa and one thing which did shock me is the last day the last night before people go back home there is a huge reception in a hotel you have all the veterans you have all the veterans family you have all the volunteers you have the people who work with teresa and then you have all the sponsor and i think this room is packed with thousand people mm -hmm. and then at one time the speaker of the night say now we're going to have teresa park to talk to us and then in a house in a room there is an explosion you have thousand people screaming i love you teresa and they are applauding and they are making noise this is a huge explosion and then to me in our first trip this is this is the part which has made me show that what is snow mass about so teresa we thank you very much you know it's it's just just beautiful yeah yeah thank you uh, wow thank you for that let me check the chat here i've been negligent and see what else we have uh oh uh jennifer wants to know how did you feel when you were awarded the freedom award your first time um, i felt very very happy and very open and very very excited i was like wow i, I received yeah. the i guess yeah. i don't know if it's the the, big, the biggest award or it is a big award. So oh, it's big. Okay, yes. Yes, and I was very excited. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and then uh, I have a, um, oh, Henry says that the transportation team will take amazing care of you at the airport. And we know that to be true, Henry. Uh, <laughs> and a few comments back to Henry on that. Uh, uh, the, it's a finely tuned machine. The volunteers and staff are amazing. Um, uh, they, uh, some people think Teresa is amazing. I, I guess I'll get on with that one. I think we all think know that Teresa is amazing. Um, let's see. Let's see what else we have here. Um, uh, so we have one question here, which is, what has been your biggest challenge? Mariella, for just basically overcoming your injury. What's been your biggest challenge in getting you from injury to your enthusiasm at this winter sports clinic? I would say to, to push myself, to make myself keep going. Even though my body was tired and it was like, you have to, you want to, and you have to, Keep on going and not give up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. so my awesome. balance, Great advice for everyone. So my balance is, is a big part of it. Can I can address? Okay. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges. Okay, I'll and then um, <coughs> the, you, your speech. She struggled with communication <laughs> with her with her speech, and yeah, couldn't um, complete a sentence or um, train a thought. Would be get stuck stuck in between what the person was saying, what was interacting. Mm -hmm. So through going through these different clinics, we have also went to the summer sports clinic down in San Diego. It gives you the opportunity to talk to other veterans and other people not in your home environment where people already are comfortable with your with your speech and it's with this opportunity to be out with other people with other veterans um your speech in your 
allowed you to communicate at a much rapider pace by um, interacting with other people. Yeah. You know, the veterans, especially because, um, you know, their understanding of your injury or other situations. Yeah. And it builds your confidence by being able to interact with other um, other veterans. That's, that's other awesome. Veterans. I'm happy to hear that you went to the summer sports clinic as well. I see Annalisa's here. So I'm sure she recognizes you too and is happy. And I bet you engaged in surfing and all those other events at that I did. event just as enthusiastically. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and we have another question, um, which is what, what would you say to veterans who want to attend the winter sports clinic, but are You cut off at the end there, Sue. Mary Ellis, she said um, that we're, but we're afraid to attend. What would you say to them? Um, I feel like you kind of have to push yourself. You have to, or you, you have to, no, you don't have to, but you should push yourself and you should want to go and try something. Awesome. Just give it a try, even if, yeah. you know, just show and then up. You can do, yes, then you can decide if you want to do it again or not. Yep. Okay. okay. That's good advice. Um, I am Mary Ella's mom. And oh, I, yes. I think the problem is with a lot of veterans, they want to get better before they try something like this. Mm -hmm. What they don't understand is that they need to go and then they get better. Thank you for sharing that. That's a really good point. So it's it's part of the it's part of the rehabilitation in these events, right? They're they're helping you on your journey to get better versus something you do after you're better. Uh, so that's a really thank you for sharing that. Um, we have one other question in the chat. Uh, what would you say to, uh, well, that's the wrong one. Um, what did you learn from the winter sports clinic that was helpful to you when you got back home? Did I cut out again? How did, how did you take the things that you did there and brought them back? Like it built your confidence. Um, yes, I would say that I built my confidence and, and showed I showed myself that I can do it. Even if I thought I could not do it, the others, another piece of me came and said, you can do it. So, so I kind of had to push myself through not wanting to, to try. <laughs> But it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a different experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, and so I think uh, we've covered everything here in the chat. Does anybody else have any questions uh, for Mariella, her family, her caregiver, Deborah? Okay. Well, I I want to thank you for for. Coming here today, sharing your story, it's really an inspiration to everyone. Um, and we really look forward to uh, seeing you at the 2022 event. And um, I look forward to seeing you in person there. Thank you. Okay. See you then. Thank you, Mariella. Can't wait to Thank see you. you there. Thank you. Great job.